Hello everyone, Daniel Yuck here. Thank you all for tuning in today, I appreciate you. Today, I would like to go ahead and make a video sharing my thought process and approach that I would take to go ahead and tattoo a hand. As you can see, we are going to be demonstrating with this silicone hand right here from Wormhole Tattoo. I will leave links in the description below so you can check this out on your end. I've also done an in-depth review that you can check out. I'll leave up here floating for you all. With that being said, let's just go ahead and dive straight on into this. As we are developing and getting better at creating videos, I'm also going to be bringing more in-depth videos like this, showing you all how I would approach it using human skin. So I figured, you know, we can go ahead and start here and we'll get to where we're going. With that being said, for this specific tattoo, it's going to be a bit different. As you can see, the majority of the design right here was drawn back in as a stencil there didn't get as dark as I wanted and the lines didn't connect the way that I wanted them to. So as you can see though, so it's going to be a bit different and I'm going to have to apply a, you know, paper towel to keep from, you know, smearing that there. So that's one of the approaches that I'm going to take or one thing there so that way I can move comfortably without having to worry about touching any of this stencil here or moving it around too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from here, work my way up because that is what's closest to me as opposed to here, work my way down. Just doesn't make any sense that I would work my way down because I'm going to be wiping all over the stencil. So that's where we are going to start placing that down. I do have a few needles in mind that come to um, my head in terms of configuration size. As you can see, I'm using a police CNC double zero seven round liner long taper. This is going to be a big wasp double zero five round liner long taper and another CNC police double zero 11 round liner. So I'm probably going to start with the 11 round liner or the seven round liner. And I'm going to begin right here with these lines that are closest to me. So either or you really can't go wrong. So for this though, I will begin with the seven round liner. And I'm also going to be using the CNC XWE plus right here, the wireless tattoo machine with the wireless pedal. Now, one thing that does come to mind is the clean, I guess, cleanliness of my area here. So as you can see, I'm hanging out my needle and I'm using the CNC Police 007 round liner long taper. And when I bring some ink in, I'm not going to want to overfill it. I'm just going to want to bring just a little bit in. So that way, upon applying the line, I'm not going to go ahead and start pulling up below my needle. As you can see right here as well, I have just a small amount of Vaseline right there. And I use Vaseline on silicone products. I do not use this on human skin. I do use Inky's products in which I also will be bringing in-depth reviews on. So as you can see, we have that right there. Now, how I'm going to begin is, as you can see, we have this Scott Shop Wipe covering the top of the tattoo. And then I'm going to just begin by pulling my first line. It's real easy to spot my first line as it's going to be right here. That's the one that I feel most comfortable doing. And before I pull this line, you'll notice that I'm moving around. I'm finding a real comfortable position that I can really anchor down and ooh, this comfortable line right here. I need to maybe hanging out a little too much. As you can see, when I'm pulling this line, I'm really taking my time, ensuring that I'm staying true to the stencil underneath. And then when I go back, I'm just going to simply pat it down like so. And I'm going to repeat that process with the other line, pretty much the same thing, but on the other side. And in terms of which way you're going to pull the line is gonna be completely up to you. You may have to adjust. So I'm going to have to completely move this way. So that way I can pull the line going from this way to this way here. So 
So, so far so great. Allow me to show you here. Let's take a quick look out. As you can see, we have the first two lines inputted and it really is just about taking your time and finding out that comfortable position. Over time, it will become natural. This tattoo is gonna be tricky because I don't want to wipe any of this stencil off here along my way. So now we're just gonna go ahead and proceed, zooming back in. And then I'm gonna do these outer lines out here with the seven round liner as I do like the configuration size. Now I'm having to readjust my positioning out here. You can't see that, but I'm readjusting my positioning out here to fit my tattooing needs up here. Let me make sure that I'm on frame. And like these areas right here in between the fingers, how the fingers have this like concave area. You have to be real careful and kind of figure out how you're going to flow before you start pulling your lines. Now, as you see right here on this part, I'm actually pulling the finger to the side, which is something that I would do on a real canvas as well, on human skin. So that way I can really get in there and make sure that the line's going where I need it to go or the ink is going where I need it to go. Then I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that process over here as well. And as you can see though, there's um, these concaved areas that aren't really easy to work with. And that's what's really putting me to the test here. As you can see, I'm pressing the finger down. I'm gonna start from up here and work my way in this way. That's what I didn't want though. That's why I wanted to keep a certain amount of ink in my cartridge because I don't really like that pulling underneath. But when it happens, you just kind of have to deal with it. And right here is pretty straightforward as you see, I'm kind of using light amounts of Vaseline to keep my stencil on. And you'll notice how I'm constantly adjusting to my canvas using light, lighter amounts of Vaseline, um, using different positions. The depth constantly changes, like in terms of where the ink needs to go. So all of that is really, really challenging. Now typically like on a mandala though, or this style of tattoo, I'm only gonna wanna go over the line once. As I'm getting, or as I'm adjusting, I'll, I'm sure I can start hitting those one pass of the lines. 
And have a little bit more Vaseline right here. Make sure that I'm on frame for you all. So as you can see, you have to really stay true to the lines and stay consistent as possible. If not, it'll really show. And what I'm doing is upon pulling these lines, it's very hard to talk and tattoo at the same time, so I'm gonna do my best here. Um, what I'm doing is upon pulling a line, I am applying a fair amount of pressure to my canvas area. And that's what's allowing me to input the ink as I need to here, as you can see. Now, I didn't want to wipe away before I was done pulling these lines. As you can see, the stencil gets wiped away. And that is going to make this tattoo a very, very tough tattoo to do. But I think we can manage. So as you can see, that's where we are at right now. I don't want to wipe too much in this area right here, guys. You can see we're starting to lose this stencil right here. So what I am going to do is I'm going to switch it this way. And I hope that we can kind of take what we want and leave what we don't. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start inputting these right here since we're losing this so early right here. One of the worst things that can happen upon tattooing is losing the stencil. But however, it's there's really no need to panic because if you're comfortable with like just drawing in general or you know um, redrawing a stencil back on, there's no reason to panic because you can kind of just do that with your machine. Where what I'm trying to say is like I can still see the lines, so I can still make way with where I'm supposed to be going and what I'm supposed to be doing. And I'm not making this up or winging this as I go. I'm still staying true to the stencil that was there. Bring this a little bit higher so I can get over here. So as you can see, we're just putting this part of the stencil in there because that's what was first to go. Just kind of practical stuff like that. If I didn't get the lines to my liking, it's okay. I can go back and kind of just input them in there. And that's how I'm going to approach this. As you can see, I'm comfortable, I'm stable here upon pulling this line. I feel it's important to be consistent in these areas so that way when it heals as well, the lines don't fall out in certain areas, especially like right here in these parts. You don't want your lines to fall out in the end. Um, you, you want everything to try and stay as solid as it possibly can. Now I may switch up my approach in terms of when I go in for ink, when I draw the ink, I'm just gonna be drawing tip size amounts and I may end up just doing like line by line and having to go back for tip size amounts each and every time just to avoid pulls 
and messes because once I start making a mess, then it can go downhill real, real quick. So I want to avoid making a mess. If I can keep it like at this rate right here, the entire tattoo will be just fine. So with that being said, let's go ahead and input this last line right here. Being very careful not to make a mess here. Now what I'm gonna do is I wanna start kind of working on this area right here. So I want to switch on over to the 11 round liner. This is going to be the CNC Police 0011 round liner. And then what I would like to do is start with this line right here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with this side over here. As you see, I'm pressing the finger down so that way I can get a nice pull. Upon pulling the line in, or upon inputting the line in. So that's how I'm gonna go about tattooing that area right there. Now for this specific design, I'm going to actually use this area right here as well with the 11 round liner since we are losing that area it does make sense just to kind of And then there is another line right here as well. Now the line weights can vary. You can choose the line weights that you choose to use on your end. Um, I think that's more like subjective. Whatever looks right to you is what looks right to you. And then I'm kind of just gonna repeat that process all the way through. What I am gonna do is I'm going to turn this this way.
And then this one here can go the same size or smaller. The choice is up to you. So, so far, so great. I'm going to actually do this one right here as well. So, so far, so good. Let's zoom out. Let me see if I can clean up a little bit of this here without removing any of that stencil that we actually need now. I don't wanna use that one to white. So as you can see, so far, so great. And we're just gonna kind of repeat that process all the way through, just taking our time, ensuring that we are really doing our best to apply the tattoos as best as we can. <clears throat> without losing the stencil as well that's a, you know you don't want that let me actually try it around this way I'm gonna, as you see, I'm, I'm turning the, I guess, client here to fit the motions that best fit my comfortability. So I'm adjusting the client to me, not the other way around. That helps me pull better lines and do better work here. Now from here, you have a few choices. I can go ahead and keep going should I choose, or I can go back and switch to the seven round liner long taper and keep adding here. So I'm gonna switch back to the seven round liner long taper and I'm gonna keep adding. But before we do that, I think it'd be cool just to kind of add a little bit more right here. All right, that looks great. Let me zoom out here so we can get a good read on it. It's not fully cleaned up yet. After I get through this area, we'll go ahead and start cleaning it up. Overall though, so far, so great. I am using the CNC WE Plus here. This is a wireless machine with a wireless pedal. I did a full in-depth review on that as well. Also, what I am doing is I'm applying the areas that I know are obvious and that are supposed to be in there. And I'm really just sticking to that. I'm just sticking to what I know is supposed to be there. 
I'm not making anything up, which is why it allows me to remain calm. If you keep a practical approach, it allows you to, you know, not panic, not overthink. Just simply apply the tattoo as, as um, you normally would have. If the stencil didn't, you know, lose itself. And you can see I'm, I always find the positioning first on which way that I think I want to pull the line. Make sure I'm grounded as best I can be. Planted, stable, and then I pull the line. So as you see right now, it's looking really nice so far. I feel we're doing a good job. Now, as you see, one thing if I had to say um, is just really not panicking, taking my time and not overthinking anything. Anything that I didn't like, I can go back and I'll touch it up. I do have to do dot work and stuff like that. So um, it does start unfolding and looking better as we put more ink into the hand. But overall, right now, as you can see, we're getting a really nice read on this tattoo. We're kind of just going to keep that workflow going until this entire tattoo is completed. And then we can go ahead and just proceed accordingly. So I'm just going to go ahead and move the paper towel or the Scotch shot wipe a little bit more higher. So that way I can gain access to over here. And I'm going to continue just inputting the lines like so. Switching out the configurations as I feel I need. And you'll notice I'm going to be adjusting the client, client to me here. And I say client because I like to treat every tattoo as if it's a real tattoo, giving me that real feeling, you know, putting that pressure on me. I'm just following the stencil, staying true to it as best as I can here. As you can see, I'm moving real slow as well, applying the ink slowly. I don't want to apply it too quickly either. Going to navigate over to this side over here. We're going to put this one in. As you see, I was gonna pull the line from this way to this way. Just didn't really make much sense to me versus going from this way to this way. So I stopped and I corrected that little action just to make for a much better pull, much better read, much better line. And I think it's those little, little choices really that start adding up throughout the process.
So we have all of that area done right there. What we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna start moving on to this middle area and then the outer skirts right there as well. For the middle area, I think I'm gonna go with the 11 round liner. It just makes sense to me. And then I'm gonna do that the same for the outer areas out here as well. So a lot of this is gonna get the 11 round liner. I'm gonna start with the ones that are closest to me as we have been. I'm not going for the world's best tattoo. I'm going for a good tattoo, but trying to get the points across as well within the video. So really putting myself to the test here. I'm going to put this back over the areas that I don't need right now. So just like that, and I'm gonna repeat that process all the way around. And then I'm gonna start with this one over here on this side. The next one I want to do is this one right there. And then I'm just gonna keep that same approach going all the way around. As you can see, I'm gonna move this a little bit more higher so that way I can get access to these parts of the tattoo. And as you see, I'm constantly turning the client right here so that way I gain access to better pulls. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this one and then we're gonna work our way out here. Let's take a step back and look at the read here. As you can see, so far so great. You can always go and touch things up should you need to do so. But I'm gonna keep that momentum going. We're gonna go ahead and do this right here. And then we're just gonna work on the practical areas that do make sense. So we're just gonna keep on going. I'm gonna do this one next.
And then now I'm gonna approach it by doing this one right here. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to turn the client this way so that I gain access to over here and I can kind of just proceed to keep building the tattoo. So I'm literally just building up this tattoo right here, piece by piece. So you can see I'm just practically approaching where I feel is practical. I'm actually tattooing, I'm noticing, I'm tattooing mostly what's closest to me is how I've always done it really. It just makes the most sense to me. Overall though, tattooing this hand is really fun. It's definitely teaching me a lot, that's for sure. So 
So let me zoom out so I can show you what we have so far. So this is the read on the tattoo right now. But like these little ones can use a little touch up there, but so far so good. I think the idea is to get the design on there before we lose the stencil in its entirety. So, so far so great. We're just gonna keep this practical approach. Now the next area that I'm gonna go for is going to be on this side. I'm just gonna kind of run it the same way. I want to go ahead and kind of move up to this area right here and then these areas right here on this side might as well do those since we're on the 11 already And then I'm going to do the last one right here. I'm going to go ahead and proceed with the seven round liner long taper to do all of that area. Okay, so, so far, so beautiful. I'm going to go ahead and proceed accordingly with these right here. I'm going to simply just approach it the way that we have been. Nothing is going to change besides the area that we're actually tattooing. And we made it pretty far. I'm confident that we can make it the rest of the way. However, you still want to be cautious and you don't want to lose that cool. You know, you don't want to lose that steady pace that we've been working at. Just stick with it through the entire tattoo. And I'm going to work my way all the way through as best as I can.
And since we're dealing with delicate stencils, what I'm doing, and even if the stencil was still strong, like on there, I would still want to approach it by patting it down like so. You don't want to wipe heavily and prematurely remove the stencil quicker than you would have needed it to be off there. So if you pat, as you can see, it kind of does justice and removes a lot of the excess ink there. And then the majority of all of this out here is going to be with the seven round liner besides this area up here, which I believe I can probably just do right now. And this area in here as well. So let me actually. I'm gonna match this one to this side as I did over here. And then the last area that I think I'm going to do for the 11 would be right here. So that's where we're at right now. Let me zoom out so we can get a full read on this. So again, so far, so beautiful. We're literally almost home free. We can just keep our steady pace, put the rest of these lines in with that seven round liner. We're pretty much home free. And then we're ready to begin some dot work. So for these areas, again, we're just gonna approach it the exact same way. We're gonna ask the client to turn this way here for me. Client, 
and I'm just gonna continue accordingly. Again, nothing is gonna change and the steady pace that I'm, you know, I've been at is going to remain the same. I don't wanna change that as that's what's been really working for me. Now, since we're reaching the end, that pool wasn't too worrisome for me. But not only that, I know exactly what I need to be doing in this area. So therefore, that pool there isn't really troublesome to me or worrisome at all. Like this pooling right here that you see, all the excess ink is what I'm referring to. As you see, what I'm doing is I'm putting in the lines here as best I can, so that way we don't lose any of them here. And again, right here, I see it's starting to really get blurry right here. But since I know the natural form of the design and I know the design overall, since I, you know, accustomedly drew this design, that, that alone allows me to, you know, kind of make my way through it and still know what I need to be doing. But as you see, there we go, just like that. And we have this area done. All these little lines like in here, I can go ahead and add those later on. I think what's more important is the actual details in the main part of the tattoo. So I'm gonna move up here and finish these out up here as well. I don't wanna rub the Vaseline into the skin because that is what's going to wipe away the design there in the red so what I'm doing is I'm just you know patting it along the way So you can see like nothing is really changing besides my positioning and the way that I'm pulling the lines. Other than that, it's always the same fundamental thought process.
so that looks great. Any touch-ups I feel like I should do, I'll come back and do them here shortly. What I'm going to focus on is kind of just putting the rest of the design in there. And then we can always focus on any minor touch-ups should we need to go back and do any. Now for this side, we're gonna approach it the exact same way. Nothing's gonna change per usual. Put a little bit of Vaseline on there. And again, we're only, we're only using Vaseline because this isn't a real person. This is not human skin. And then now I don't need that uh, napkin anymore. I can start up here. And work my way that way. Which is what I'm going to do. And the last parts I'm gonna do are right here. And then that's pretty much it for the outline. So I'm feeling really confident that we're gonna make it through this outline here. I'm still not gonna change the pace in which I've been working at.
And that was the la or one of the last lines on the stencil. Let's zoom it out so we can get a read on it. There's also just some finer lines like this line right here it needs to go into all of those right there and then this little line in here as well. It's just little things like that that I'm going to go ahead and kind of go over and just finalize before proceeding with all of the dot work. Now that the majority of the stencil is on, I could move a lot more comfortably now. Simply because I don't really have much stencil to lose anymore, which is a very good feeling. It's very uh, nerve wracking. Well, it's a bit nerve wracking. Um, it can be, especially while you're learning in the beginning. The idea of losing the stencil, it's like the worst case scenario. But again, that goes back to just staying calm and practical. Don't panic and A and B your steps through and you'll be good. And as you can see, I'm moving the client again to allow me to be more comfortable. So you can see right there, just adding the details accordingly makes for a better read on the tattoo as well. So, so far, again, as I like to say, so beautiful. We're just going to keep on working our way through and begin with the dot work. So now that we have the line work done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to this so long double zero three round liner for the dot work. And I'm still running the CNC WE plus and this is the wireless machine with a pedal a wireless pedal forgive me there and i'm still going to be running at 7.5 volts for the dot work and i'm going to start with this area right here and i am using the dynamic gray wash our pre-made gray wash set i'm using the level 40 and i'm using the level 80 so i'm going to start with the 40 and then i'm going to go back over and layer with the level 80. so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to start by marking the outside area In which I don't want to go past, as you see right there. Now, as you see, it's very, very light, so I'm going to dip into the 80 there. 
And this is so just to confirm, this is the dynamic gray wash set. This is not straight black that I'm dot work with or that I'm doing the dot work with. So you see, I'm just putting in dots right now. I'm laying down the first layer and I'm just going straight across right here. I'm not using any specific figure or any specific pattern. I'm just simply going straight across up and down with the 80. And then what I'm gonna go ahead and do here after I get a good foundation is I'm gonna go back with the 40 and put dots in between all the spots here that I didn't. So I'm dipping back into that 80. So that looks great and then I could even go back over this one more time and kind of put more dots in areas where I want with the 80. I also do want it to be darker in these areas right here up top. So I'm going to focus on those a little bit more while I have the 80% here. And then I'm going to go into the 40 now. And then we're just gonna work through the entire thing again. So as you see though, now we're getting somewhere by just simply layering dots meticulously and taking our time. And then I'm gonna repeat that process all the way around. on these ends right here, just to make them all cohesive and copacetic. Now I'm gonna turn the client this way and then proceed accordingly. Now me personally, I do enjoy using the dynamic gray wash set for like stippling and dot work just because it allows me to get smoother shades and transitions. But not only that, I avoid going too dark too fast when I use these pre-made gray wash sets. 
I've also done an in-depth review on it, so if you are curious about the Dynamic Grey Wash set, be sure to check that out on my YouTube channel. I highly recommend this Grey Wash set by Dynamic Ink. Or dot work as well it can really be however you envision it it doesn't have to be any specific way um, there's a lot of room for you know I guess interpretation when it comes to what looks good to you especially when using dot work it's really completely subjective in terms of you know what the individual is looking for so what I mean by that is I can put, you know, dot work essentially in every shape of this mandala or, you know, some sort of dot work and it'll look amazing, which is what I'm saying. Um, shading, not so much. Shading is not always required. But dot work, you can get away with dot work almost on anything really. This also gives me good insight as to how I could approach dot work, you know, multiple techniques. I'm getting comfortable and more acquainted with using dot work as well. So that's a good plus that this silicone hand is, you know, well worth the investment. That's a good indication that it's well worth the investment. I do feel like I'm tattooing a real hand.
And then the same thing, we're gonna do some more dot work up here on this last part, just to make it all nice, copacetic and cohesive. Walked a little too hard there, took some silicone off. That's also beautiful. So we have some of the main areas of dot work done. Now from here on out, you can kind of just implement where you want to put your own dot work. So I'm just going to kind of just go with the flow here and put dot work where I see fit. And right off the bat, where I do see some dot work going in is right here. And I'm going to follow the same format everywhere I put dot work into. You see where I mark my outline? Like so. And I'm still using the 80% here. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm gonna go into the 40 now, and then I'm gonna add another layer of dot work over here.
what this is what i'm doing here is i'm avoiding going too dark in areas that i don't want to go too dark on You can keep that approach, I mean, essentially all the way, pretty much the entire tattoo, putting the dot work where you see fit. Now for me, I'm just gonna go ahead and keep that approach. I'm gonna put dot work on all of the spots where I feel fit, and we'll just go ahead and go from there. And it's all natural. I'm not really gonna go and out of my way to look for any spots. Like another spot that I wanna point out, obviously would be right here between, right here. It'd be nice for some dot work to go in here. And then even in between here. You get my drift. Also as well, for example, like right here on the fingers, I can show you what I see off the bat. And I'm pretty sure a lot of other people may see this as well in terms of where you can put dot work. So.
So you can see right there is another obvious spot where we can put dot work. And you just want to kind of repeat that thought process throughout your tattoo until you get the design and overall look that you're going for. Now in these tighter areas, you don't have to put dot work there should you not choose to do so. I mean, that would be totally subjective and you know, correlated to your capabilities and what you wanted. But for me, I'm just gonna go ahead and put the dot work in there. Just to keep everything cohesive. like so. And I'm just gonna again repeat that process throughout the entire tattoo. As you can see though, it reads beautifully, it reads amazing. When it's done, the tattoo is gonna look beautiful. So let's just proceed. I'm not gonna rush, I'm just going to take my time approaching it the way that we have been. tattoo in its entirety here is the final product overall i love the way that it came out it came out great it reads nice and it's a solid tattoo as you can see the wormhole hand is clean still easy to clean up 
a very good hand to practice on. Overall, that's how I would go about approaching tattooing a hand. And again, we are going to be bringing more videos with me tattooing human skin so I can elaborate more on that for you as well. But for now, this is how I would approach tattooing a hand. The fundamentals would still apply to human skin. There's just a little bit of variance, uh, variances such as you know, silicone to human skin and things like that. I wouldn't be using Vaseline. I would be using an Inkies product as well. It's just little, you know, variances like that. Overall though, this is how it came out. I'm very, very happy with it. If you have any questions, if I didn't touch base on anything specific that you may have wanted to know at any point throughout this video, please feel free to drop it in the comments below. And I'm going to do my absolute best to assist you in the best possible direction. I also have social medias all under the same name at Daniel Yuck. I have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok all under the same name under Daniel Yuck. D-A-N-I-E-L-Y-U-C-K. I would truly appreciate the support on there. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell for me as I am going to be bringing more videos like this. Thank you all for tuning in yet again. You all have a great day.